Okay, everybody. So I'm reporting to you from a very, very special location. I've actually spent the last couple of days, I've been so fortunate to find myself at the Golden Door located in San Marcos, California, which actually isn't too far away from where I live uh, in Oceanside. Essentially, I wanted to bring you guys something really, really special because so many uh, times people have reached out and said, hey, do a state of the collection, do a state of the collection, which really got me thinking. And ultimately, there are so many watches that I have just because of the channel. Um, and I really needed to curate myself at some collections and there's sub collections but what i'm going to show you guys today and share with you all is my core collection surprisingly it's seiko based and you know even less surprising of course every range of seiko from grand seiko to king seiko to seiko astron seiko prospects seiko 5 um, even some neo vintage seiko models uh, i have it all kind of and I have have reasoning for each piece, what it means to me. And that's something that I just wouldn't be able to share with you guys if I, you know, unboxed and pulled every piece out of storage, the hundreds of watches that I've accumulated over the years. So I wanted to have something that was more personal where I could really share the reasoning behind each piece, kind of where it fits into the grand scheme of collecting, as well as, you know, what it means to me personally and how I feel these pieces represent me. Quick wristwatch check, of course, I do have the Grand Seiko GMT on today and it's served me very well <laughs> during this trip. Um, and I've just been really excited to share with you guys these very, very special watches just 10 watches we're going to cover and you know while I was here it really made me think um, you know maybe before you buy that next luxury timepiece consider spending that money on getting yourself a luxury experience like coming here to the golden door um, so maybe that watch you've been on a wait list for for the last couple of months it's going to take time and you know what you can buy luxury goods secondhand and save some money. You can't buy luxury experiences secondhand. Sure, you can live vicariously through others and maybe through this video for some of you, but if you do have the means, I would say definitely take the time to treat yourself, create lifelong memories, um, and maybe just enjoy a trip with some of the watches you already own and love. Um, and just, yeah, again, put something back in yourself. Here at the Golden Door, they're, you know, They've just been so amazing in terms of welcoming me in during this men's week. And um, it's just been a real experience. Of course, unfortunately, I can't share with you a lot of the activities because there's, you know, people are here to kind of escape, to unplug, recenter, and really reconnect uh, with, uh, you know, a part of themselves that maybe, like for me anyway, I got to be Mark while I was here, I wasn't dad, I wasn't husband, I was just smart, you know, and I happened to be, you know, uh, running around in my spare time getting some YouTube B-roll, but uh, it was exciting, it's been amazing in terms of uh, the amenities and the different courses and classes you take, um, so it's, it's really had an impact on me, and you know, it all kind of started from me wanting to showcase these watches at a location that really uh, accentuated how special these pieces are. Because, of course, if you're a fan of the channel, you've already seen all of my watches in tabletop reviews. You've seen the low light transition. You've seen on the wrist. You've seen off the wrist. You've seen size comparisons. You've seen them laid out in kind of EDC formats. Um, but what you probably haven't seen is these just gorgeous watches that mean so much to me out in the wild, out in their elements, uh, out in a place that honors Japan and its legacy of craftsmanship, attention to detail, um, passion, right? Just, uh, and precision, uh, that as I really think is exemplified, uh, by the golden door. So with all that said, guys, Let's go ahead and get into each one of these 10 very special watches, what they mean to me, where they fill a space within 
uh, you know, my collection as, you know, and what they represent as well uh, as a collector, not just each individual piece, but also how that all fits together to create a collection that I feel is very representative of me and something that I can be proud of. Seiko was originally founded back in 1881. They are Japanese in origin and now factories throughout Asia. They cover all market segments from entry level to high end. And I think it's only right that that's where we start with my collection. The Grand Seiko SBGR017. This discontinued Alpinist like explorer alternative packs all of the hallmarks that make Grand Seiko such an aspirational brand while also showcasing that they can in fact construct a top tier bracelet commensurate with the quality of the ornate dials and hand finished casework they've become so well known for. It's versatile 39mm diameter paired with 200 meters of water resistance make for an excellent everyday combination that oozes both luxury and capability while its uniquely double signed dial reminds you of an earmark in time before Grand Seiko was the modern juggernaut that it is today. On to a thoroughly modern Grand Seiko, my SB GM245. Now this was my first official luxury purchase. This modern sports reference really felt like the most Seiko Grand Seiko offering with its SKX 009 like case contours and 200 meters of adventure ready water resistance. Purchased during a time of great transition in my life, I wanted something that memorialized betting on myself while also inspiring future travel and adventure where I might find myself utilizing its globe trotting friendly flyer style independently adjustable central hour hand. Its sporty 40 millimeter diameter and signature corporate Grand Seiko blue dial offer an understated elegance that follow life's natural ebb and flow. They say every collection needs a dive watch, so why not my Prospects SLA-017? Seiko's original limited edition reissue of its first ever dive watch, the 62 MAS. This 60 skin diver design remains timeless and is accentuated by its modern premium build and construction. The 39mm diameter and Grand Seiko based 8L35 movement made it a long time grail for me and I'm proud to share that I was able to receive this premium diver as a gift commemorating my 40th birthday. With the recent resurgence of vintage inspired divers, this icon rises above its lesser known and fame peers alike into a rarefied air many can only dream of. Another semi-rare Prospects model would be my SRQ029. I've always been an automotive and motorsports enthusiast, so this modern reinterpretation of Seiko's original reference number 6138-8020 Panda Dial Chronograph easily caught my eye. At 41 millimeters in diameter, packing column wheel and vertical clutch systems, it offers all the modern niceties while integrating distinctly vintage design cues that create a perfect blend of old and new. Actuating its mechanical pushers offer a romantic every second counts nostalgia to timing all of life's daily and even often mundane tasks. Now let's move on to something a little dressier. My King Seiko SJE091. Grand Seiko's lesser known little brother, the King Seiko was a sibling rivalry needed to elevate the brand's premium line aspirations into the stratosphere. It was a famed battle that Grand Seiko ultimately won, but it is nice to see the brand revive the King Seiko line to recognize its important place in history, acknowledging the milestones it provided in the brand's road to success. This modern automatic 38.5mm 44KS reimagining is even thinner than its manually wound vintage inspiration, and it does fill that space of a dedicated dress watch, while avoiding feeling overly simple or even boring. 
Now let's take a look at something more modern. Some might even consider it an oddball among this particular group. This is my Seiko Astron SB-XD007. You really have to appreciate the grab-and-go nature of a quartz watch. It's always ready, and in this case, will never even require a battery replacement, thanks to its solar-powered caliber hidden behind its expertly textured dial. Sure, the Astron is a historic line, but this iteration is fully modern with its GPS-regulated exact timekeeping, full titanium construction, brushed ceramic bezel, and even 20 bar of water resistance. Thankfully, its rather svelte 39mm diameter keep this modern beast in traditional proportions that capitalize on wearability, making it an ideal travel companion. In a similar theme, but looking back, let's take a look at my Seiko Scuba SC VF003, another titanium stunner. This rare neo-vintage little diver is unique through and through, even down to its legendary 4S15 movement and evolution of their Danny Seikosha 52 streamline of 4Hz chronometer certified King Seiko movements. A cousin to the highly collectible and influential Red Alpinus of the same 90s era, this diver shares design cues with its land-loving relative hearkening all the way back to even the early days of the original Laurel Alpinist. This versatile little 40mm titanium diver is a real standout with its warm toned cream dial and gilt accents. Now looking to the skies, we'll feast our eyes on my Seiko Flightmaster SBDS001. As a prior air defense gunner in the Marine Corps, I've always had a soft spot for aviation pieces. This titanium titan is a rare bird that often flies well under the radar of even the most fanatic collectors. While it's a distant relative to the cult classic SNA-411, Quartz Flightmaster, this older mechanical variant is not without its own merits. The infamous caliber 6S37 column wheel chronograph movement was quite exclusive for its time and even desirable to the point of being licensed for use to the likes of German brand Junghans and Swiss Tag Heuer. Diving deeper, let's take a look at my Prospects SLA-039. Every collection needs a statement piece, and this premium recreation of Seiko's first professional 300 meter saturation diver and the first high beat diver reference 6159 may even border on the eccentric with its bold proportions. With many modern deep diving behemoths being more equipped to accompany the robotic arm of a submersible watercraft, this pre-marine master offers a beast for the wrists of men. Its 44.5mm diameter utilizes all of Seiko's masterfully ergonomic design principles to keep it wearable and although not Seiko's first dive watch, one could argue that it is the brand's most influential with features that have since become intrinsic to the brand's overall identity. Our 10th piece takes us back to the number 5 with the Seiko 5 Sports SRPK17. As a parallel to the statement watch, there's the beater category, and this 55th anniversary recreation, limited edition, of the very first Seiko 5 sports model from 1968 offers an everyday appeal that packs a ton of visual interest while still oozing a very signature aesthetic. A faithfully wearable recreation at just 39mm, its retro looks offer a robust modern alternative to more vintage examples. It serves as a kind of reverse halo model for Seiko, being one of their best modern entry-level offerings and, while not technically scarce, with 15,555 units produced. It still gives off the vibes of being a connoisseur's choice amongst a sea of solidly specced entry-level available options. Okay guys, now you know I couldn't leave off this segment without bringing everything together and putting it out here so we can get one last family portrait, kind of covering 
all of the bases. Um, it's, so it is nice to see everything collectively all in one shot uh, after seeing them all out, uh, you know, in their natural habitat for a bit. So starting from the left and moving over to the right, of course we have pieces that cover the everyday, uh, whether it be the Grand Seiko or the King Seiko, kind of differing on the fact of one is more of a dedicated dress watch while the other is more of an everyday piece, you know, uh, with a bit more water resistance. Then moving on to the travel and adventure side, we do have, of course, the Grand Seiko GMT as well as the Astron. There's a nice bit of duality there in terms of them both being very, very capable of time adjustment on the fly. So uh, really being great travel companions as well as having a whole lot of sporty attributes in terms of that extra water resistance. Then we move on to the, of course, very popular diver space. You have something quite iconic Iconic, you know that 62 MAS reimagining recreation um, and it's just absolutely iconic and then you have something that is more of a cult classic um, with the uh, SC VF 003 uh, really nice ties to Seiko's history there speaking of ties to Seiko's history moving on to the chronograph space guys of course the panda dial motorsports uh, it's just so much to love there within that space and it just fits and it will be an eternal classic while well, we have a more contemporary classic uh, with of course the uh, flight master automatic so uh, absolutely fantastic also very sporty in terms of uh, you know being the other side of that coin with a screw down pusher screw down crown um, and a ultimately very unique very very limited space uh, and then of course moving into the statement piece guys that big deep saturation diver that has tons of history built around it a lot of lore and then it's just executed to a absolute luxury level um, it's quite impressive and then you know even if you want to call it a beater watch just a simple watch you put on that's still it, it's almost the other side of the statement piece it's something that can easily represent uh, you know, my enthusiasm, uh, you know, at a very entry level price with a nice little upgrade to include that Forstner period correct bullet bracelet. So guys, collecting watches, it's it's crazy. It's nuts. You don't need more than one, but you know, there's a lot in the world that you don't need that don't necessarily give you quite as much mental exercise. I'll call it that because for some, it's quite a lot of pain and anguish, um, you know, mulling over the different options and curating something that will ultimately represent you from brands that, um, you know, you might not even be uh, one of their target demographic. But I think for me, why this feels so, uh, you know, so uniquely me is it just follows my own personal journey of watch collecting, watch discovery. And I was really happy to be able to share it for you, with you all, you know, at here at the Golden Door. Uh, it's really, you know, with their focus on health and wellness, it's really given me uh, a lot of focus in terms of just realizing that these watches are not tools for measuring time. Uh, they're instruments for capturing those precious moments throughout your life. So make sure that you do take that time and consider before your next luxury wristwatch purchase, you know, maybe spend a little bit of that hard-earned cash on a luxury experience for yourself where you can go and find just those amazing memories. And remember, you can buy a watch secondhand, but you can't buy a secondhand experience for yourself. And all of those things will help season your own personal wabi-sabi of your lifetime. So with that said, guys, let me know what you all think in the comments below. If you like the video, please do hit like. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. And of course, another huge thank you to the Golden Door Spa and Resort located in the majestic hills of San Marcos, California.